Hello and welcome. My name is Carsten Lützen. I'm an Agile coach and a Scrum master. Today I'll talk about the Agile coaching competency framework that uh, Lisa Atkins uh, have made and uh, made available for all of us. It's a super, super nice model to use for your either personal growth or if you're helping others to grow as Agile coaches. I was introduced to it uh, some years ago uh, and it was quite an aha moment for me. If you like these videos, please subscribe and share. That would be super, super awesome. So just to give a bit of a backstory. Some years ago, I was introduced to this as I just shared. And one of the things it made me realize was that at that point in time, I was uh, unknowingly incompetent. It wasn't set out uh, directly by uh, by the other person, but later when I drove home, home in my car, that was actually the realization I had. And that was quite a good experience for me to have. And the way this is structured is it shows, it gives one view of what are the important things to do as an agile coach. Uh, what things do we need to have in our toolbox? And the big part up, up here is, so, we need to be agile, lean practitioners. Well, almost spelled correctly. And because we need to, to live these uh, agile values, right, that we, that we preach. So it's not just empty words. Um, we need to do that. And that fills up quite a lot of this, as you can see. Then, because we also want to improve others, we also want to improve the system that we are in, we have on this side, I'll just uh, shorthand it a bit, we have professional coaching. Um, and the definition from ICF is somewhat uh, partnering with clients in a creative process uh, to inspire uh, both personal and professional uh, potential, something like that. But that is like professional coaching, not just what some people call coaching, but actually actual coaching. The other one down here is facilitation. And that was also one of the aha moments for me that uh, when I say facilitation, I've sometimes facilite, misused the term a bit. So this is when you're a neutral facilitator, right? The same up here. Here you do not have an opinion of uh, right actions. This is one-on-one. -on -one, and there is also some overlap in group coaching and facilitation. Um, so neutral facilitation, where you're just trying to help the group facilitate a good process, get them into a good rhythm um, and help them get the value that they want from it. So this is the very neutral part where we can help people internalize quite a lot. Um, and the other one uh, over here is where we more bring ourselves into the game. So this one is teaching. And this one is mentoring. And with teaching, right, we cannot coach new knowledge. So sometimes it might be necessary for us to go into a teaching stance where we teach them some new tool. And then if we want, we can use several techniques to get back into a coaching stance, for instance, if that's the setting we are in. Uh, or mentoring. Be careful about the mentoring part because just because it worked for you last year or 10 years ago, doesn't necessarily mean that it will work right away or it can even work in their context. Be aware of, uh, of the context, right? Then we have these three ones left. And the first one, these are kind of the mastery tracks or whatever we call it, uh, technical. So technical mastery, meaning how can we make our tech stack, our way of working with technology even better. So 
software engineering, the craftsmanship in software engineering, for instance, um, if we are in IT, how can we make that even more uh, automated or whatever uh, are the things that we are working towards. That doesn't mean that you code uh, 24 seven, but it means that you have some baggage that you can help the actual engineers uh, improving that game. So either this or using mentoring, coaching and so on. So you can be quite deep on this one, um, but you should at least have these ones and then pick one of these. Then we have the business mastery. And with business mastery, it's like that knows the business business side uh, as their own pocket. So they can they know the process, they know the different um, products in the portfolio, how they work, what are the plans uh, for go to market and stuff like that. And these ones are often, so to say, from the business side, where this is from the IT side. I hate using those uh, that terminology, but you get the point, of, uh, you get the idea behind it. And then the last one is transformation mastery. So on an organizational level, how can we improve how, what systems do we have? What teams do we have that needs to work together? How can we make this uh, more efficient? How can we make sure that there are less friction on this? What patterns can we recognize on, organ on an organizational level? For me, I'm more of a technical mastery, um, slowly getting more into this transformation mastery, but this is not my strong suit yet. This one is the same with the mentoring, teaching, professional coaching, facilitation, right? We can always improve on this, on these as well. I'm hoping that this gives you some idea of viewing you and where can you grow uh, using this model. And I can really just recommend you to check out uh, Lisa Atkins and what she has made. It's, it's really, really awesome. And I'm hoping as always, that some of you will share comments, ideas, uh, tips and tricks, feedback in a comment or in a message. That would be super awesome. And then have a super, super awesome day.